Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First, I would like to sincerely thank you for the interest that you continue to nourish in the contents of this channel. I am also grateful to you for the generosity that you have shown in your comments and your suggestions. Today, um, I will address a couple of points relating to how a student should phrase his or her research questions and hypotheses. And as an aside, I would say something about the methodology chapter. Now, the first question, the first point is the research question. The research question, as we know, is the part where the author's main point is expressed. It announces the content of the thesis. It announces its scope. It is to a thesis what a thesis statement is to an essay. Therefore, one has to be careful in phrasing this part, which is the research question. Uh, of course, the research question has to take the form of an interrogative sentence. However, there are many students, while they do this, they unfortunately ask yes-no questions. A yes-no question as a research question may not be favored for the simple reason that the answer is either yes or no. And this being the situation, there is likely not to be enough scope for interpretation and for analysis. Therefore, it is advisable for a researcher to write his or her research questions with the WH word why, how, for example, or with the phrase to what extent or in what way. This way, uh, there is enough scope uh, for interpretation and for analysis. The second point I would like to address concerns the research hypotheses. And again, here I have to stop and point out the fact that research hypotheses or writing research hypotheses in you know after the research questions will depend on whether you are adopting a qualitative or a quantitative design for qualitative designs as is well known uh, the the hypothesis can emerge from the the data can emerge from the analysis of the data can emerge at the conclusion can emerge from the theoretical framework but um, we are not supposed to articulate the hypothesis the way we do in, uh, when we adopt a quantitative design. Maybe a researcher can choose to express an assumption in the form of a paragraph that does not harm. But um, this researcher adopting qualitative design is not supposed to uh, articulate his hypothesis or her hypothesis hypothesis hypotheses in, in, in single sentences the way a quantitative researcher would. Now, for quantitative research, the story is different because variables, the variables to be studied are determined beforehand and therefore they have to be included in hypotheses. And hypotheses, as we know, are exponents of the research question. The research question is somehow general, but the hypothesis is specific. Addressing each hypothesis, hypothesis addresses uh, uh, the variable to be, uh, to be studied uh, in relation to the other variables. Um, uh, one thing that uh, needs to be said in this regard is that the hypothesis in the uh, quantitative design has to be mentioned in the form of a declarative sentence and it has to be assertive, it has to have an assertion, uh, you know, it has to, to involve an assertion. For example, uh, to say that, uh, for example, academic level has a bearing on uh, the student's uh, uh, written performance or performance in writing. Uh, for example, uh, gender uh, is or can explain the difference, uh, the different pronunciations uh, in uh, context so and so. This is a general way of, uh, this is just a suggestion, okay, this is an example. Uh, as we can see in these hypotheses, we can tell which variables are, uh, you know, brought into focus we can also say which variables are dependent and which are independent. All in all, the hypothesis section uh, and the way we write hypotheses will depend on whether we adopt a qualitative design or a quantitative design. One thing that remains to be said in this regard is the ordering. And uh, from my experience as a jury member in a number of theses and uh, as a reader of drafts, uh, at the level of the doctorate, the level of masters, sometimes you see this, uh, you know, situation where you have objectives and then after 
hypotheses and then research questions. This is not this is not the way to go. Okay, so what we have is what we should have is you know objectives and then research questions. You know we move from general to specific, and putting hypotheses before the research questions in a in a study is tantamount to putting the cart before the horse, and this is not. Certainly, this threatens to undermine the, coher the coherence of the work and the logic, uh, of course, uh, that, that the researcher has, uh, has to, uh, to abide by. Uh, one last thing that I would like to mention in this regard is the uh, idea that, um, you know, this, I insist on this. Please, when you phrase your hypothesis, whatever, whatever you do uh, in your study, check with the people who you think are knowledgeable in the field. Check with your supervisor. If you are left to your own devices, then you are not likely to succeed uh, on an individual basis. After all, research is done, on a, uh, is, done, is done in a community. There is what we refer to as a research community. So please be encouraged to talk to the people who you think can offer some help in this respect. And of course, don't forget to mention them in the acknowledgements section. One last point, that's the aside, it's about the methodology chapter. I have seen uh, students in the course of a defense, of a thesis, being blamed for not reserving you know, a, a chapter for methodology. While this may be true for the uh, theses that, that have, um, you know, that involve instruments for data collection, involve statistical analysis, for example, involve other types of analysis, where there are instruments, where there are participants, where their, their gender, their demographics are important. Here, yes, we need a chapter because we need a part that will accommodate all these pieces of information. But for a thesis in phonology, for example, or in theoretical syntax, let's take, for example, the phonology of Moroccan Arabic. For example, how regressive assimilation is rendered in this or that environment. Let's say that's just an example or how some sounds spirantize in, in Moroccan Arabic, in this or that context. Here, how can we think of a methodology chapter at a time when all that we need is a statement about our dialect, of the dialect and that, that from which the data is drawn. Uh, and uh, you point out, if, especially if you are a native speaker, you just all that you need to do is point out that you are a native speaker and native speakers are characterized by a competence that can uh, that can uh, dispense with uh, any informant. This is what we refer to as introspection. So all that you need to do is say that the data is drawn from introspection, unless of course you have uh, you need to have recourse to informants, and uh, then you need to, um, probably a more detailed description of of these informants. So the methodology chapter is not um, a, a fundamental chapter for all types of theses, contrary to what uh, I have recently heard. So, so please take these uh, remarks into account. And if there are things that uh, you would like me to add to this, uh, uh, please write them in your comments. Thank you very much. And uh, let's meet in the next video. Thank you.